Dubbing's here with another look at the Avoid Game Editor. Right now we have a new release coming up and that has the Game Movement Mode. This is basically a movement prototype. So we start the game, we procedurally generate a world in which you can move around and you can jump from surface to surface. This is a six degree of freedom game and as you move around the surfaces you're aligned with them. The worlds consist of boxes with bridges between them and in addition to the movement you have basic tools so you can drill through the landscape with a primary tool and make larger holes with a secondary tool. Okay so let's back up for a bit. So I'm going to exit and stop the game and I'm going to new just to get ourselves back to the starting point. So once you've launched a void you can go to the game menu and that now has start on it. This will bring up this window which gives you some basic information and here we have a tick box with generate new world. If you haven't got a world already loaded then this will automatically set to generating one for you otherwise you'll be able to uncheck that box and use the world that you've already made for yourself. In fact the default is that it's unchecked if you've got a world and you can check it if you want to delete it. There's information about the controls so this is currently all hard-coded but we will be introducing the ability to change these. The mouse for camera aim does however have an invert mouse setting already available in the options sorry the camera menu. In addition to that we put in a couple of tips to reduce motion sickness. Basically motion sickness can occur a bit more than in many uh, games due to the fact this is a six degree of freedom game. You can rotate and move on to all surfaces and that does in some people induce a, a small amount of nausea if they haven't got their settings set up correctly. The primary problem is often performance. Um, the two main uh, performance options that we have available are that there is a level of detail change distance which you can reduce to reduce the amount of polygons that are in the scene and you can also lower the resolution through resizing the window. Here I'm at uh, 1080p which is perfectly fine for many um, graphics cards. And then there's also the cinematic camera option. If you've turned that on I would recommend you turn it off as whilst this does mean that your mouse is somewhat smooth it can induce some lag in the mouse and that can induce a little bit of nausea and in addition um, I'd recommend you send the field of view to 90 degrees. This is now the default but if you've been using a void from before you probably have the previous default of 120 degrees which is more suitable for editing but not very easy for uh, moving around in the world given that your peripherals become somewhat distorted at that uh, amount of uh, view. Okay, so we're going to start a game. Since I previously generated a world and the seed for uh, each world will start off the same with each instance of the editor, but uh, this is a second world I've generated and so the seed has now been changed, we will introduce the capability to remember the seeds, but remember that you can always escape from the play mode um, and then you can basically save this world out uh, and uh, keep that world if you so wish to. You can do that at any point during uh, the game. So let's continue the game. So as you can see I'm on one surface now and I'm just running around forwards and as I move over a landscape I will realign to it. The alignment is if I'm moving is slow but if I stop is fast. We found that this was um, the least problematic way of doing the realignment for people. We found that if the alignment was too fast whilst moving it wasn't good and if it was too slow while stationary it was also not good. Okay so the other thing we have is the capability to jump. So avoid has movement on surfaces but it also has the ability to jump and fly. So I'll show you first of all jumping from surface to surface. So here I'm just going to basically look somewhere. I'll drill a hole in it so you can tell where that point was. Oh, this is a strong material so I have to drill a bit. And then basically I'm going to press space bar which just jumps me. And there we are. 
you might notice that the, um, the reticule in the middle of the screen has an arrow there, and that arrow shows me where the surface um, attraction is. And uh, there I was using the Q and E keys to rotate myself around in order to show that off. So that's basic jump. Basic jump is you press space and you go where you're looking. So run around, press space, go where I'm looking. Okay, so what do you want to do a faster jump? Well, uh, there's a couple of ways of doing that. One way is to crouch down. So again, I'm using control, which is crouching down and then pressing the space bar and that's a faster jump. I think I may not got it right there. There we go, slightly faster jump. And the other way is um, if you're moving in a given direction, you can use shift to accelerate and then you can also do a jump and keep uh, looking in the direction you want to go and pressing forwards. Okay, so let's say you want to do some flying. So now I'm going to launch myself out into the open. Um, and this is the sort of uh, free momentum full flight, we call this. So here I'm just flying away and I will gradually slow down due to air resistance. I'm not pressing any keys at the moment. Or I can say press forwards and this will then accelerate me forwards. I'll press the shift key to do so uh, faster. And this is basic what we call momentum full flight. And the default state of an avatar in a void will be that you do not have much flight control. The next thing you'll notice is that the reticule has a circle which is grayed out in this mode. And if we bump into a surface, we reattach and that circle now is white, but and with an indicator of where the local surface attraction is. Let's jump up again. And this time I'm gonna press crouch. I'm now away from the surface um, and I'm in what I, we call momentum-less flight. Here, basically, if I don't touch any keys, I don't move. I touch a key, I move, and you can strafe with this quite easily, which you can't without it, and you can use the shift key again to accelerate somewhat. This is about uh, a half the speed of moving on the ground. So it is slower than moving on the ground, and it's slower than moving um, in momentumful flight, but you have more control over where you're going. So here we are on the ground again, and if I jump up towards here, I'm flying, and then we bounce off if we're looking away from the material in a separate direction. This can be a little tricky to control, and so you'll find that there are good solutions for running around. Now I'm bouncing again, and you always bounce you in the direction that you're looking. And if you're looking at a surface, it will automatically reattach you to that surface. But you can always use the jump key, the space bar key, to jump off again. Now you'll notice that there are some different materials in the world, and these materials have different strengths. So here we have a material on the outside, which is stronger than the material on the inside. So if I fire my large tool, rather than getting a, a half sphere from the point of impact, here we just uh, damage the surface material, but not the material below. There are a few issues to be uh, resolved with uh, the, the tools, and the, particularly the destructive tools, um, and making some additive tools, but that's uh, not yet done. But this one is quite fun just for digging yourself around. And if you potentially do get stuck in some material, uh, then that can be resolved by digging your way out. Okay, if you press F1, we're now in a third person mode. Your avatar is extremely basic at this point. Um, from the rear, just the circle. And this can be uh, useful just to check where you are, just to find out you may be having a movement problem. You might think that you're unsure quite why you're moving in a particular direction. And if you press F1, you can see that, ah, maybe I'm stuck here. Oh, I can see I'm stuck there because there is a, uh, a thin thing in the way. And if you want, you can then shoot that and get, make your way out. So running around, and jumping is the main mode. Here we're on a steel interior, which is fairly strong with a, I think this is a copper or gold surface. And so this is a little uh, readout, hide away from, from the, the main play area. And I'll just make my way back to the, the side. 
and we are currently generating only a few of these boxes in the levels. So you see here your height is about, uh, this is a one to four high, and your height is roughly three high. This is the standard height that we'll have in the game for standard avatars, and you'll be able to build yourself into different sizes eventually. So these procedural um, uh, rooms are built, uh, we build about uh, three or four of them, and um, we can build larger levels in the future, but this is just at the moment to give us a, a nice basic starting point. Of course, if you want to, you can always use the procedural tool to generate more. So just an example of that, if we exit the game, I'm just going to go game stop. So we could always save that out. So now I'm in uh, edit mode. I'm going to fly away from the world. So this is the basic world that we have. And what I could do is choose, for example, to uh, select the linked boxes, block gen mode. This doesn't currently have an undo. I'm going to an undo, sorry. I'm going to choose set. Uh, let's have that material. So this is a, a ceramic material. And uh, I'm going to make the size of this uh, maybe uh, 64 by 64 by 64. And uh, let's put this at a tool distance of a few hundred. And let's click it and we make another box. And let's make one more over here. In between. Okay, that's sort of linking up. And then basically this large structure, we can then play with that. And we're going to save, no, we're not going to save the changes. Uh, generate world, new world is off now. And then we can start the game. And now we're in this uh, larger environment. We'd love to get your feedback on the movement. Uh, it's taken quite a bit of time to play around with it and get it so that it's uh, comfortable. But we think that we've got reached a point now where the basic movement is, is fairly good. There's um, obviously some things that we can uh, play around in terms of the speed, etc., and the turning rates. And we'll probably expose some options for these once we really have solidified what we need. Um, but we think that uh, for most people, this should be a pretty comfortable experience in which you can run around on all these surfaces in a very uh, smooth way. Okay, and that's it for me.